Hi everyone, welcome to video 8 of chapter 2. In this video, we'll take a look at another example. This is the example 2.3.4 from your textbook. It involves somewhat more complicated settings. Okay, so it's also a production model. We are producing two types of products. We just call them P1 and P2. And we will use two types of raw material. We call it AB. And plus, we need labor. And then in the factory, we have four processors. And each one has different capacities. OK, so um, in the next table, we list the data. So we shall be quite familiar with this type of information gathering and information presentation. So let's read this table and look at it. So here we have four processors. They are labeled as one, two, three, four. And then for each processor, it is listed here how many hours of labor that's required. So processor one requires 20 hours of labor, 2, 3, 30 hours, and 3, 10 hours, and 4, 25 hours of labor. And then for each processor, um, we and there's also specified in this column the material type A that is required. So for each processor, that's how much they require. 160 for processor 1, 100 for 2, 200 for 3, and 75 for processor number 4. Okay? And the next column is similar. That is for material B. So we'll take a look. These are the numbers for the four processors. So the four processors would use these three types of um, resources to produce our products. Mm. If all these are being given to processor 1, then it could make 35 of product 1 and 55 of product 2. Okay, that's for processor 1. And for processor 2, it takes these resources, labor, material A and B, and it will produce 45 of product 1, 42 of product 2 and so on and so forth. And then for processor 3, with these resources, it can only produce product 1, not for product 2. Okay, so just the possible situation you can encounter. And for processor number 4, with these resources, it would produce 90, of, uh, 90 units of the product 2. Okay, so these are the settings. And then we have some constraints. So this row here um, is about the limitation on the resource. So our resources are limited. For the labor, we have maximum 1,000 hours. Material A, we have maximum 8,000 pounds, and material B, we have maximum 4,000 pounds. So that's the limitation on the resources. And then, at the same time, we need to meet the production requirement. There is a minimum. So this says minimum. So for product type number one, we have to produce at least 2100 and for product 2 we have to produce at least 1800 units of it okay and the last row here are the price for the material a and b for material a three dollars a pound and b is a bit more expensive seven dollars a pound okay so that's all the information we have so you are welcome to take a look and absorb this all these information. There's quite a bit of them. Okay, so our goal is to set up 
and mathematical model. So we define variables. We call the four variables x1, x2, x3, x4. These will be the number of hours per week we're using for processors number 1, 2, 3, 4, respectively. Okay. So the task will be the following. How do I choose these values, x1, x2, x3, x4, to minimize the total cost and yet at the same time um, meet the product requirement and within the limitation of our resources? So everything in this table, all the information in here will be used. They will show up somewhere in our model. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so the table is repeated here on the upper half of the slide. Let's take a look at how to set up the cost function. Mm, that's the function that we want to minimize. Okay, so we'll call it f, and it's a function of the variables axis. How much will be the cost? Well, the only price that's being listed, these prices are the prices for material A and material B, and that's what we want to minimize. So, by using x hours of process 1, 2, 3, 4 with the x indices, how much material A will we be using? Well, so for processor 1, I use x1 hours, and then it's 160 pound per hour, so it will be 160 x1, right? We're familiar with the concept. And then for processor 2, I'll have 100 times x2. That's how much I'm using. And, and then 100 is the kind of the, uh, how much material it takes per hour, okay? And then um, for processor 3, is 200 x3, and 4 is 75 x4. And I add all of these up, that will be how much material A in pound I'll be using adding up through all four processors. And since the unit price of the material is $3 a pound, and then I get the 3 multiplied by the pound. That's the price. That's the cost. Okay, so that's for processor A. No, oh, that's for material A. And the similar thing is done for material B, which is listed here. Oops, here's a typo. There shall be a plus sign. And so 30 x1, 35 x2, 60 x3, 80 x4, and I will add up these four terms. Okay, sorry for the typo. I put a plus sign between these two terms. It should be there. Okay, so um, now um, we could uh, um, multiply in, collect like terms, and simplify a bit. Okay, and if you do that, you do 3 times 160 plus 7 times 30, you get 690 in front of x1, and you do for the all other three terms. And these will be the number you will get. So the cost function is now takes this final expression with four terms. And now let's look at the constraints. So we have various types of constraints, so let's list them up. So first let's look at the labor. There we have a limitation of the resources. If we add up all the labor that's required, which is the expression here, so you see where do we get this? Well, 20 times x1, 30 times x2, 10 times x3, and 25 times x4, and this shall be less than 1,000, because that's the maximum value, right? Okay, and uh, now for material A, I can do a totally similar thing. I take these four numbers, multiply them by x1, x2, x3, x4, respectively, and then I add them up. That's the total amount of material A, and that shall be less than 8,000, okay? And then for material B, the 
condition here, you take this column, multiply by x1, x2, x3, x4, which is this term here, and there shall be less than four cells. Okay, so these first three constraints comes from the limitation of the recess, this row here about the maximum. Okay, so then we have uh, two other constraints, that is about the minimal amount of production we must achieve. For product 1, minimum is 2100, and for product 2 is 1800. Okay, so let's look at product 1. So how much will we produce? Well, you just need to look at this column here and multiply by the variable, right? So 35x1 will be made by processor 1. 42x2, or 45x2 is by processor 2, 70x3, processor number 3, and processor 4 makes 0. I add all these three up, 1, 2, 3 times, and uh, it should be bigger than 2100. Zero, zero. So look, this is a bigger than sum, okay? Because that is the minimum production we must make. And the total is similar thing for product 2, this here. So you look at this column, multiply this by x1, by x2, by x3, by x4, and then add them up, and the number shall be bigger than 1800. Okay? And then, um, finally, we always have the non-negativity constraint on the variables. They're always positive. Okay? So that becomes our constraint, then under this constraint, we want to minimize the cost. Okay, so here is the summary of the model we have just made, which uh, I simply just copied it again here. So we look at, now forget about the, the setting and whatever, the processor, whatever. Now we have a mathematical problem. I have a function depend on four variables, which is written like that. And I want to minimize this function subject to these six constraints that's being listed here. Okay. So the new thing in this example is that we see now the constraints here can have less than equal sign and they can also have bigger than equal sign. Okay. So both, both of these inequalities are possible to occur in the constraints. Okay, so this is how you set up this mathematical model. And now in the remaining part of this video, we um, will um, make some modifications to make the model a bit more complicated. So let's say we will now allow overtime but uh, the amount of overtime we can allow is limited. So we will allow maximum 200 hours of overtime. And then with overtime, the salary will be higher. So additional salary will be $30 an hour. Would this be beneficial? Well, in order to answer this question, the first step is to set up the new mathematical model. And then we would solve both models and see which one will give us a better situation. Okay, so in this example here, we will only be setting up the model. Okay, in order to accommodate the new situation, we introduce a new variable. We call it x5. And this is the number of hours of overtime. Okay, and from the setting, then we know that x5 shall be a number between zero and 200. Zero meaning no overtime, and the total overtime is bounded by 200 hours. Let's see how we should modify the cost function. So we call the cost function now g. So all the costs that occurred in the first version of the model, the simpler one, let's call that, is still here. But then here we have an additional term caused by the additional salary for the overtime. If we have x5 hours of overtime, 
then we'll have to pay 30x5, the number 30 is the unit, that's the additional cost that will occur for us. Okay, So this will be the new cost function. And now let's look at the constraints. So from our previous study, we know that all the old constraints for the simple model will all be applied here, and we will have to put new constraints for the new variable that we added. So the constraints for the labor, for the material A and B, these remain the same. And the constraint for product 1 and 2, these remain the same. The new constraint for x5, as we stated here, there is a cap for x5. The maximum overtime hour is 200. We cannot go more than that. So we get this additional constraint. And accordingly, since we introduced a new variable x5, and then in the last constraint list, x5 is included in the variable, which is a non-negative quantity. Okay, so this is our new model, a more complicated one. So and minimize this cost function here, subject to this new set of constraints. Okay, and uh, so don't worry about solving these problems. This will come back to this later, and we'll spend a big chunk of the semester talking about the methods to solve it. Right now, we are focusing on how to set up the model. Okay? So, I um, hope you enjoyed it. See you later.